Hi everyone, so welcome to another episode of the IT Wildcard. And in this episode, I'm going to be looking about looking at how to install the I.O. programming language on a Windows system. And the reason why I'm doing this episode specifically is a bit of cross-pollination going on here, is that regular viewers of the channel will know I've got this ongoing series called Learn to Code, Code to Learn which is me going through the seven languages in seven weeks book and expanding it out to seven languages in seven months and using the book as a backbone. So the first week I spend going through the book, doing all the exercises, doing the homework, and then I sort of build on that. Now, one thing I noticed, I'm on the second second chapter now, so my second month, and I'm on to IO. And one thing I noticed was that there seems to be a bit of a problem in installing the binaries. Um, I've seen a couple of resources now that have mentioned that um, and mentioned their sort of workarounds because you obviously can go to the um, GitHub page and do various builds. Um, you know, there are some instances where there are package managers that you can use. Um, but I found for Windows, um, obviously you can build it in Windows. Um but I didn't really want to do that. And the problem that people were facing is when they went into binaries, they were, I think, well, well, I don't know specifically. I just know that people had said they'd had problems downloading the binaries from the site. But when they click here, nothing happens. And we'll come on to how I got around that in a moment. But I just wanted to mention the site, look at the site generally. So there's, uh, this is the main page. I'll include links in the description to all of this. So you find, you know, if you go into the guide, which is a good place to start, you'll have all of these different links here that you can use. Now, a lot of these, when you click on them, what you then realize is actually they're just links to stop points further down the page here. So this is a really long page. If you go to binaries, you end up here. So just be mindful that there are two different binary routes here, depending on whether you've ended up, you're doing it from the first page or you've gone in through the guide. There's also, this is really handy as well, which is uh, the IO links area, which has lots of different tutorials and articles. And again, this is super useful if maybe, you know, you're not using Windows and you want other ad advice for setting up on other systems. Um, these are just useful links to try and see you know what other people have tried um, to get to get it to work on their system. So I've now installed installed it on two uh, Windows machines, and we just go through um, on this machine, which uh, does have it all on already. But I'm not going to mess it up by just going through the motions here, um, because there is a sort of step you have to do, um, which I'll just won't do, <laughs> basically, and just explain. I do. This is a Windows 11 machine, by the way. And again, certain caveats if you're opening, um, working on Windows 10, which I'll come to in a moment as well with this. Um, but yeah, so some resources here if you need to dig a bit deeper and, you know, what I'm doing here doesn't work for you or isn't applicable to the particular operating system you have. So again, yeah, this doesn't seem to be working. So what I normally do at this point is try the usual trick with sites like this. I go, OK, open link in a new tab. And, and one other caveat, you know, obviously you have to be when you're poking around in websites like this, you have to be reasonably trusting. So just make sure that you've got all the appropriate security on in your system um, before you start playing around with stuff like this. And if you're unsure, don't do it. Basically, don't click it. But I've you know, played around with this, scanned various files, and I'm pretty comfortable with this website at the, at the moment when this video goes out. So I'm going to try opening links in a new tab. And you can see it's wanting to do it. I don't know if you saw it flash there, but it's not. Something is blocking it. So this is another trick. So if we go copy link address, I'm just going to open up a separate one of these. I'm going to paste it in. And there's the actual location. Now, interestingly enough, you'll see we're going off to a different site here. 
So let's just. So here's what the problem is. So let's just see when I go into here what, what it's complaining about. So I'm using Chrome and it's saying the site isn't using a secure location. And the file may have been tampered with. So it's not a secure location. So at this point, you know, this is the point you just make a decision. How bad do I want to learn I.O.? Or is there another way I can do this through, say, GitHub and build it independently? I didn't want to start doing a build. I did, I believe, do a build on my Ubuntu box just for the hell of it. Um, but it was pretty, you know, it took me a while because I haven't done builds for such a long time that, yeah, I had to spend several hours messing around with configuration files and making a few tweaks here and there and moving folders around. And, you know, the usual story when if you're trying to build on a, um, a Linux box and it's something you haven't done for a while. So I'm going to download this. There we go. And so that's now there. You can see, yeah, I did do this earlier because um, I was just, you know, experimenting to make sure. So at this point, we're going to obviously unzip it. So we're going to do an extract. And let's have a look at what's in here. So it's interesting how this is done. So you can see here, we've actually got this executable inside of here. So, and you'll notice the executable itself. So this we've got a zip of a zip. So we've got our executable, this interesting DLL and a license and a readme. So this is a good point, I think, here to read the readme because this tells you, uh, this avoids a lot of pain. Okay. So this actually just extracts another set of files and a folder and it asks you the location you want to extract to. So what I normally do when I'm doing this, and we'll, we'll come on to it in a moment, is simply extract it and then move, move it, move the uh, the resulting folder to my where I want to have it on my system. Now, here's the thing: I found that every time I installed it, I did need to did need this file. So, yeah. So let's just run this and, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if I just do this, you can see here, I'm just going to extract it into its own folder here. So there it is. So what I would usually do now is copy this and I'm going to copy it to my C drive. And you can see I've actually renamed it here. So it's actually sitting in here now already, but renamed. Also, you'll notice that what I've done in the binary folder, I did what it told me to do in the readme, which is I copied in that other file here, the DLL, into the binary. So really what you're doing if I if I do it here on the one that I don't need to copy and don't need to rename I just put it in here and yeah so just make it make sure it's in the binary of the IO language folder wherever you moved it to whatever you renamed it to and then one final thing you need to do because it's not going to do it for you is you need to find the um, environment path stuff so on Windows 11, I, can, I, can, I don't even remember this. So what I normally do is put type in environment. Yeah, edit the system environment variables because I'm a bit lazy now. Um, come in here, go to path, edit. And you'll see down the bottom here, I've just made sure I've included that IO bin. This is where my executable is. So now... With all that done at this point and obviously i don't need to do it because i've already done it i would reboot the system um, now there are tricks you can perform 
in the various versions of Windows, and it does vary, I think, from versions to versions, slight, slightly, in terms of getting it to load that path when you put it in there. And there's a few commands you can do at the command prompt that'll do that for you, or in you know if you use PowerShell, whatever you use in Windows to do that. But generally, I would just reboot at this point anyway. So next thing I need to do is go into my editor, which this time I'm using Visual Studio Code. So I'm using Visual Studio Code for all of this project. And um, a couple of things. So I, in mine, I always run PowerShell as this sort of side panel. So the first thing I always do, and this applies to any install I do, is just make sure that because of that path update, and the fact that obviously IO is there as well. I've installed it, but yeah, mainly often the reason why this doesn't work, you install a program and then it just doesn't work at different places apart from where you installed it, the, the folder you installed it in. And that's because you haven't done that path update. But I always do a, a, like a version check. So IO, whack, whack version, however you want to know, not whack, whack, dash, dash, sorry, whack, whack, sorry, dash, dash version. Um, and that you can see there, yep, so that's that's my version number. Everything looks fine and dandy. Um, if I wanted to check this with an I.O. file, I could. I think I'm in the right folder here. Let me just look, core concept, yep, about dot I.O. So that's just some I.O. code there. Because I've just finished week one of me going through the books. I'm playing around with some stuff. Um, getting ready for week two and that's when I'll do my my video my sort of uh, you know what I what I've um, what I've learned through learning about IO video so that'll be coming out in the next week or so yeah so that all seems to work the other thing the last thing you need to do to get this because if I didn't have something in place I wouldn't have this code highlighting and so all I simply did and is came uh, yeah come into this which is the extensions area in Visual Studio Code and find this which is just the I/O language syntax hi highlighter and that's all I've got in Visual Studio Code. I've got nothing else I, I'm using. I'm just doing all of the the running of the code from you know from PowerShell uh, in the in the command prompt. Um, I haven't really looked through and s s had a look through and see if there's any debugging tools. I don't believe there is. I think there is another syntax highlighting tool in here. If you do IO programming language instead or IO programming, you might come across something called IO magic. I haven't tried this one. Um, I noticed there's less downloads for it than the other one. And I think... The one I've installed was the one that I saw recommended on other sites about the, the I.O. language. Now, calling a language I.O. in itself is quite problematic because, you know, it's also short for input output. So, yeah, just be careful when you're trying to find things uh, in any of these um, marketplace tools. You might end up installing the wrong thing. So just make sure you read it. And of course, if you don't happen to use Visual Studio Code, then you can try and see if there's any I.O. plugins for the particular IDE that you use. And so there you have it. So, yeah, just to recap, the steps to do this were, um, you know, going to the, the where the binaries are, capturing that link and putting in it separately as a new tab, overriding... Um, you know, with some trepidation, the warning from Google. Um, obviously, doing any extra scanning if you've if you need to um, on on the files, unzipping the file, unzipping the zip within the file, um, moving the unzip folder to where you want it to be on your system, uh, moving the DLL in uh, to that folder into the binary folder, should I say, updating the path uh, and then in and then checking that 
it's running correctly at, at the command line regardless of what folder you're in after possibly first doing a, a restart or whatever uh, you want to do to get path to to be the path to be recognized the update to be recognized and then finally if you want to installing a code highlighter which I now after being spoilt after years of coding in like notepad or stuff without code highlighters um, just basic text editors uh, yeah I, I don't think I could go back to not using a code highlighter unfortunately so hopefully that was informative um, if you've got any questions, you, know, you can always put them in the comment section and keep a look out for, you know, the, the next uh, episode of Learn to Code, Code to Learn, where I'll actually be talking about programming in I.O. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now. And I will catch you in a future video.